What's up, y'all? I got a banger from the MOA podcast. Let's get straight into it. When you realize the majority of men are making like 51,000 or less, and the average man in the United States is like five foot nine, and you listen to what women say they want, there's this massive disconnect. Facts. There, go ahead, start from the I'm beginning. Sorry, but if I was a man, I would be the biggest slut ever. No, you would not, no. because this would be you. Here's a still image from your video, and here's you as a male. I would get the mullet haircut. As depicted here. I would get the slutty little mustache. Let's see if that helps. Oh. I would do the day in the life videos and start off with my boxers. And I I'm going to stop you right there. Mm -hmm. She's imagining that if she was a man, she would be the kind of man that she looks at on her phone. Mm. Women of many qualities are always in demand so they imagine if i was a man i would be in demand and then they think how do i feel about men who are in my demand and then they make up stories about how easy life would be life is not easy for this let me know in the comments do you think it's easier to be a guy in the modern dating market or be a woman in the modern dating market just let me know let me know. Personally, I think it's way easier to be a woman. Man, he's not getting any views on his boxer shorts day in the life story. Oh my God, like they have it so easy and they do it every time. Remember, when they say they have it easy, they mean them, not you and me, <laughs> men have it so easy. Facts. Now, just apply that same principle to economics and the workforce. Men have it so easy. Not these ones, these, these men. These men have it so easy. And that's why men need to be last in line for jobs. Men. And now you understand the situation. Are you having a hard time? Well, that doesn't matter because men have it so easy, these ones. And that's what they mean by equality. You can do more and get less, but it doesn't matter because men have it easy. Quiet, you. I do a helicopter with my every morning. Okay, so... <laughs> Whenever yeah. we ask women, so they did an experiment and, where they took average looking guys and then oh gave God. the Tinder profiles to women. And how do you think the women did as far as picking up other women? Horrible. Abjectly fucking yeah. horrible. Yeah, they terrible. were incredibly bad because when women had to actually go out and pursue, they had no concept of manufacturing attraction whatsoever. And whenever when women are horrible conversation starters, typically, they don't know. They don't have any game. They don't know what good questions to ask. They don't know how to parlay back and forth. Their humor's bad. I've never met a woman genuinely that is funny from the jump. Like a woman that you meet that you're like, wow, she has a good sense of humor. Usually a woman gains a sense of humor once she can piggyback off of your sense of humor and figure out how to make you laugh. Don't shoot the messenger. I don't make the rules. I just enforce them. But I'm just saying, I've never met a chick that's actually really funny and good looking where you ask women hey what would you be like as a man they're like uh, they all presume they're going to be six foot three and good looking yeah and the reality is that is not how the genetic distribution works but anybody have any uh, anything else you want to say about this guys whenever women take over male dating accounts it's d disasters and there was one lady who actually went and uh, pretended to be a man for several years and saw how horrible it was for men and then took her own life Okay. When she yeah, saw no, she straight up, she straight up offed herself. Um, I think I did an episode on her way back. I can't remember her name. Bless her heart, though. How horrible it is for men. She took her own life. Yes, she took oh her own life. Goodness. Oh my god. Okay, so it, this is a long time ago. It was more like twenty years ago. In these situations, when you see this, I just don't think women understand. It's not like I'm not talking about me. I live on the strip. I have an awesome girlfriend, and I make a good living. I'm talking about guys who like are day laborers out. In in South Texas, I'm talking about dudes who like work up in Wyoming on an oil rig and just bet like are lucky to get blue collar guys, truck drivers, construction workers, plumbers, electricians, the guys that keep the foundation of society running usually are the ones that are the most overlooked home alive like the, when you realize the majority of men the majority of men are making like 51,000 less 51,000 or less that you in the average man in the United States is like five foot nine and you listen to what women say they want there's this massive disconnect True. And so so there's this huge group of men that are left behind and so when women say this they're like well when, when I become a man of course you're gonna be a NBA small forward with a huge <laughs> Who makes a hundred million dollars a year? That's, That's what a you helicopter think. with, but yeah. it's not. But it's not like that. Like it's yeah. a, like a lot of guys can't do the helicopter. Sorry, Bree. What if you came? We became men, and there was no helicopter for you. What happens there? Just try. Harder. I go to the med spa. And <laughs> the med spa. <laughs> shop. Yeah. That's Actually, get in. Why don't we do the AI influencer one? Because that's perfect. Oh, okay. That's a perfect uh, segue the first into this one, one. And then the second one. Yeah, the, we'll okay. do. We'll look at both of them. Let's All look right, at it, guys. I want you guys to look up at the screen, especially those of you who have only or friends with only. 
want to watch this one. Go yes, ahead. yes, this will be very educational. Yeah. AI generated influencers on TikTok are the target of a petition signed by over 12,000 parents. I'll explain. In an online petition addressed to TikTok CEO Xiao Si Chu, the parents say AI generated influencers are contributing to the unrealistic beauty standards children see online. Sponsored by Parents Together, a nonprofit organization that advocates for children and families, the petition urges TikTok to clearly label influencer accounts that are AI generated. Research has already shown that TikTok is a potential minefield for kids and teens. Your most vulnerable users struggling with body image, self-esteem, disordered eating, and other unhealthy behaviors, the petition stated. Since 2023, TikTok has required users to label content that is AI generated accordingly. But the concerned parents say it's not enough. They're calling for TikTok to, quote, proactively and clearly identify these accounts. According to NBC News, many of these accounts specify in their bios that they're virtual influencers, but don't do so on their content. In a statement, a TikTok spokesperson said three of the accounts named in the petition have already been removed from the platform. Wow. Okay, so that's that's wild. AI influencers did not think we were going to get to that point. But man, I guess it's a thing. This is wild. This is why I think kids shouldn't even be on social media. Let me know. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Do you think that kids should even be allowed on TikTok? Personally, I don't think kids should be on social media until they're like 16 or 17. Like you need to be in high school, in my opinion, before you get on social media. The thought of a kid being on social media in like the fifth grade is extremely terrifying. Let me put this into perspective. When I was growing up, the first smartphone was the iPhone 1 when I was like 18, 17 or 18. You know what I had before that? I had the freaking flip phone Motorola, like the Razor, and then you had to like buy credits, you had to buy text messages, you had to buy phone calls, like all that stuff. Like you didn't just get to get online and have unfiltered access to the World Wide Web. You had to get on a computer, right? Nowadays, kids, like the most obsolete piece of technology that a kid this generation that's born in this generation will see is a freaking iPad. That That's the most obsolete piece of technology. Bro, I'm so old, I remember playing Oregon Trail. <laughs> <laughs> I played freaking Oregon Trail, dude. Like the old one with the floppy disk you had to put in. Like that's the kind of stuff with the really clicky clacky keyboards. Like that's what we played. Like we played Snake on the Nokia brick phone. Damn! That's what I'm saying. Like I'm that old. But nowadays, kids have unfiltered access to the internet. Therefore, they get on there. Comparison is the thief of joy. And these kids don't have enough development in their prefrontal cortex to be like, oh, this is real. This is this is fantasy. And so they see these virtual influencers, the AI influencers, and they compare their regular everyday mundane lives to other people's highlight reels. That's the problem with this social media. And that's why it's rotting kids' brains. It's absolutely rotting their brains right now. It's sad. I think that at a certain age, you shouldn't be able to view this stuff. And in China, that's what they do with TikTok. It's all informational content. Here, it's all brain rot. That's all it is. How interesting is this, that, that all, now there's body dysmorphia because all of a sudden these, uh, tic, these influencers have bodies that are not realistic. So now, like you said before, like again, anybody want to guess what state in the Sorry, union has the most women with breast implants? Anybody? Florida. Texas or California? California. I was going to say California. Florida. It's a trick question. What? You know, California. where were they invented? Vegas. Anyone know? Miami. They were invented at the Southwest Texas Medical oh, Center Texas. in Houston, Texas. Yeah, in Texas. 1974. The biggest Everything medical center in the world? In yes. That's where, they, that's where the first time that you guys... That's why I love Texas, baby. Everything's bigger out here in Texas, baby. We keep it big out here, boy. <laughs> Watch the movie Breast Man. And I grew up in Texas. I grew up. I grew up in Texas. I grew up. All the women in Texas, but the boobs in Texas don't look fake. Right, but they're just really good boob jobs. They're but there's really a lot. Good. Yeah, yeah, the most boob jobs per capita is actually San Antonio. Now, here's the funny thing: I grew up in Texas, and I'm very comfortable with girls with boob jobs. Extremely. In fact, I haven't Every dated a girl without a boob job in like years. And so that's something that you get comfortable with, right? My belief about what women's shape looks like came from the fact that I grew up around that kind of environment. Okay. Now, well, the thing is, here when we see this, there's two issues. Number one, you say that your young child. Or yeah, my son. He grew your son. Up. He your grew up son. Models, your son grew up around. Wait, 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 wait. Are you? Now you're a single mom. Now you're a single mom. Are you a single mom? Models and said this girl's too unattractive, and he's saying this at 12 years old, yeah. right? That's the first problem. And the second problem is if you have an audience, you're about to get a place. You might want to take a look. You're, no. There's going to be a problem because a lot of these influencers are making so much money. Can you play the second uh, the second one? This is the follow-up right here. I like this podcast, but does he let them talk? It's so weird that he's just doing all the talking. 
Her model isn't real. Her entire Instagram account is generated with AI. This is the owner of the account and he's bringing in $10,000 a month doing this. He's doing this with brand deals that feature her and they know that she's AI, but they don't care. She's getting engagement and she's making sales. The guy who invented this account said he did this because he got sick of dealing with models and their demands. And I gotta say, this is impressive. Like, go get your bag. But I don't think it's the most ethical. I mean, it works for him and it works for companies. But what about the people who actually do this for a living? The entertainment industry is known for treating their people like But, you know, if it's an AI product, they don't know any different. And I feel like these, like, crazy demands that these influencers have <laughs> might not be that crazy, actually. They might be crazy, some of them, but not all of them. And something similar to this is actually the whole reason why the actors are on strike. It's just wild that he found a way to take models out of modeling. And this begs the question, what's next? And he's not a manager, he is the product, so he gets to keep all of the profit. It's a little sad because say what you want about influencers, but like it is a job. And it's like, how are Instagram models supposed to compete with this? And like influencers that are trying well, to- Well, here's the thing. They've, commodis they've commoditized beauty. And do I think it's taking work away from models? Yes, but at the end of the day, if <laughs> you gotta think about it as a business, right? If these models are asking for a lot, and people don't wanna have to deal with their demands, deal with you showing up on time, deal with you, you know, saying, I need this, that, and the third. Like, if people don't want to deal with that, then they're, they're, they're going to take that commodity of beauty and they're going to put it into AI to somebody that never shows up late. They're never sick. They never complain. They don't talk back. They don't ask for a lot of things. This is why I think, like, if you think AI or somebody's going to take your job, you need to go up your skill sets, right? Do I think there's a lot of AI channels on YouTube? We've reacted to a lot of them, right? There's a lot of AI, but I think at the end of the day, what will prevail is actual people doing reaction channels and doing YouTube channels. I think that will be the most popular. Now, when it comes to like certain things like information or, or looking at, you know, I want to see the biggest boats in the world or things like that, or who are the richest YouTube, like you want to see that stuff? Yeah, AI can probably put together a much better video than an actual person could. But all he did was monetize the commodity of beauty into an AI model. If you're mad about that, I mean, beauty is something that you're born with. You don't have to earn it. So it's like, how selfish of them to be mad about that when you're born with beauty, you don't have to earn it. And all they did was turn it into a commodity, commodity where they don't have to listen to you whine. They don't have to listen to your complaints showing up late, you being in a bad mood, you not getting, you being picky about getting the right angles. Like they took all of that headache out and they just made it where they could churn and put out so much output with the least amount of work. To me, it sounds like a good business model. Now, is it taking jobs away from models? Yeah, but like they're still Victoria's Secret models. But at the end of the day, I don't think every every person that thinks they're hot should be a model, right? I think I think that term right now is thrown around really loosely. Let me know in the comments. What do you think? Do you think there's more women nowadays that say they're models? I see so many people when I react to videos talking about I'm a model. I'm a model. Are you though? You're beat it best. Shots fired. Shots fired. You're talking about you're a model. You're not a baddie. You're a run-of-the-mill everyday girl. You know, get brand deals, sell products. Models already have a really short shelf life, and this is not helping. I don't know about you, but I like real humans. If you like my content, Ooh. follow my TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube for more. It really helps when you interact. Cool. Brittany, what do you think? I want you to consider this. Sorry, this cake is good. I want you to consider this. <laughs> I like this guy. He's, he, he knows a lot, but he's like, what do you think about that? And he's like, oh, like, let him talk. So if I take an AI image that is clearly Katie Moore, I need to compensate Katie Moore for that. But if I take a comp uh, if I take a compilation of Milana and Katie Moore and put them together and get the average of it, I don't have to compensate anyone for that. Do you understand? That's crazy. I can actually because now I have an, another original product, and so because of that, that's where the writer strike came from. And ladies, I disagree with you. I think artificial intelligence is going to get closer and closer to the Turing test. And once it does that, you're going to have a serious issue with girls trying to make money on OF because the guys who are managing these accounts aren't going to get any pushback or feedback or anything like that. Does that make sense? The real modeling world has AI models in it. So your big brands have artificial models or AI in real campaigns. So you have to understand at some point there is going to be a merge of the, the real and the AI. Those two worlds yeah. are going to have to coexist, and there's going to be a point where we, as people, look at look at airports. There was Stupid. a point I remember I was so mad one time boarding a flight, and I was like, "One day you're going to be replaced by a kiosk." Now you go and you look at United. Yep. All of those workers are now what? 
kiosk. Yep. Now there's one. You just contradicted your own point. Stupid. Here's the thing. Humans and AI don't have to work together. Humans have to understand how to utilize AI. That's what it is. That's the answer that actually makes sense. What she just said makes zero sense. Humans and AI have to work together, but then she said she went to a kiosk at an airport, but then a kiosk replaced a person. Like, do you even hear yourself? Goodness. Kiosk, then there are people, because what people aren't, you aren't offering more than what someone else can create digitally. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it's just, okay. it's what the world really is. Well, the, I think what's interesting, what gets left out of that conversation is the demand. If you can't tell the difference. It does to the influencer. Does it, it does to the influencer. The influencer does, yes, but the, the consumer is, is all not it's what it's the, about. There's a functional difference between automation and AI. Okay. So what we're looking at here, the reason why she's all upset about this, but that some guy like, you know, made something that was believable enough that guys will still stroke off to it because right. it's, it serves Don't the purpose, off right? Don't they stroke off to cartoons though? Well, Aren't that's well, but yeah, yeah. yes, there there are. But the thing is, Some. is that the thing you is you can tell that, the difference. At, at some point, you won't be able to tell. Yeah, the but difference. see, yeah. that's that's niche, right? That's that's like a fetish, okay? Right. As opposed to this looks almost like a real chick, and mm -hmm. she'll do but exactly what I want her to do. But girls are going and face tuning the out of themselves, of and that's not even themselves anymore. So what's the difference? So, well, it's not about the supply; it's about the demand. And that should tell you something about the guys who follow you on a regular basis. On exactly turning beauty into a commodity that they can sell at a much higher output with a l way less input, or whatever they're paying for you for you on a sexual in a sexual nature is they'll stroke off to your feet pictures, but they'll also stroke off to uh, AI generated feet pictures. Oh no, they are. Will like, probably, which will come. Oh, yeah. by, by, by the way, they're, they're doing like Corey yeah. E has a, a Hey Jen and they're like making, uh, the, every time they have a new cli a client jumps on and subscribes, he goes, hey John, great to see you, blah, blah, blah. And it's her talking, but she has nothing to do with it. It's just, just doing yeah. an AI generated thing. I know some guys you that are doing- the Saudi robot no. flirting with the girl? No, I didn't. What? Okay, so there's a Saudi robot and he's, in full get up and the commentator that was at something they were doing she's gorgeous like stunning and the robot started flirting with her yeah they had emotional intelligence yeah i've, I've seen exactly. i've seen that the oh, ones that, if you guys yeah. been to the sphere there's a bunch of uh, ai robots that'll talk to you they get into really interesting conversations that's like so too. weird to what me. that's that is crazy scary. Yeah. that's so weird yeah. to i think this is great though you know why you know why i think it's great because i think it will get actual women out of of it will get them out of selling their bodies on the internet. And it hopefully will light a fire under their behinds to go out there and learn a high income skill where they can go get paid a higher compensation for having a higher acumen or more knowledge in a certain field. But the longer that we let them commoditize their sexuality, the more that they will become degenerates. It's just the simple fact. I think this is great. This is a little, this is a competition for you ladies. AI's coming for your jobs. They took our jobs, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but that's what it is. I think this is a good thing though. They're gonna take AI, commoditize your sexuality. They'll do everything that you can do and more via video, via pictures, and not have to deal with anything that you would have to put up with. They don't age, they don't talk back. Therefore, if the, if, if the AI can flood the market, then once people realize that it's AI, maybe they'll be like, eh, this is kind of distasteful. I don't want to do this anymore. I can find this on wherever else you find it. So maybe it'll kill the industry, which I hope it does. I hope we can kill this OF industry. I hate the fact that so many women have sexualized themselves instead of going and getting ed an education and going to do something that's honorable that they can look back on when they're later on in life and say, you know what? I gave it a good shot. I may not have made a lot of money, but I led with my heart. I led with my morals. I led with my ethics and I did something that I'm actually proud of. I found a good man. I had children. I built a family. I built a legacy and look at all these people that are here around me that all came from me. That to me is beauty. N beauty is not, oh, I made a bunch of money from selling feet pics. That's not what I would consider something to be proud of. Let me know in the comments though. Would you be proud of selling your body or would you be proud from going out there and pursuing a career, finding a good woman, having a family and nurturing a family? To me, that seems way more fulfilling than going out there making a, ho making a whole bunch of money and just sexualizing yourself. It's just my two cents. Don't shoot the messenger here. I don't make the rules. I just enforce them. But I think this is a good thing. I think this is absolutely a good thing. What do you guys think? Do you think the emergence of AI is a good thing for this corn industry, or do you think it's a bad thing? 
personally, I think it's good. Guys are going to pay for it no matter what, so they might as well be able to get it whenever they want, and they can talk to these girls, and it's they know it's fake, and it is what it is. Cool, who cares? But, like, these women... It's really putting the scarlet letter on themselves later on in life where they can't be taken serious. And then now their children are being ridiculed. Their siblings are being ridiculed. Their families being ridiculed. Like, I don't like anybody to be shamed and things like that. But when it's needed, sometimes we got to do it. You know what I'm saying? If you're going to sell your butthole on OnlyFans for $4.99, I believe you should get shamed for it. That's just my two cents. Welcome to my TED Talk. I'm Levi. Um, <laughs> but for real, I appreciate you guys, man. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. I will see you guys tomorrow, man. Peace.